Welcome back to The Point. Excerpts from Narendra Modi's interviews to TV9 and ANI are playing on all the channels this evening. And the key issue is the way he responded to a question about apologizing for 2002. Has he reopened an old controversy or skillfully averted a potential minefield? Joining me now are BJP spokesperson and former diplomat Hardeep Puri. Also still with me, Congress's co-chairman of its media department, Randeep Singh Surjewala. The Bombay editor of The Hindu, Amit Barwa, and the opinion page editor of The Telegraph, Rudrangshu Mukherjee. Mr. Puri, in his interview to TV9, Narendra Modi was asked why he hasn't apologized for 2002 as demanded by the opposition. And his reply was, let Congress first apologize for its sins and then ask for apologies from others. Now, this is not the first time Mr. Modi has been unable or unwilling to apologize for 2002. Such a sticking point for him. I think Mr. Modi has been entirely consistent on the developments of 2002. He's consistent he, he in has not been apologizing. In, no, 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 no right. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Please, please sh put aside the prejudice, put aside the fact that there has been Modi bashing, there has been Modi defamation, and a, which has become a blood spot over a 10-year period. Let's put that aside. What has he said? He's given hundreds of interviews, and what he has said today is not an does not have an iota of difference he has said we have a criminal justice system and the criminal justice system has subjected him to the most That's not intense what he said today no let this is what he said all along no. today he said the same thing no can, he, can, I, can I interrupt just yeah. before the audience gets misled what he actually said and I'm repeating it is first let Congress apologize for its sins then Congress should ask others why is Mr. Modi unable or unwilling to apologize for 2002 the, the, the flow the flow of the conversation is, has to be read in the context of what he has said earlier. He has said that there is a criminal justice system. He has been subjected to the most intense and rigorous scrutiny which any okay. politician has been for 12 years. And what he said, now look at it this way. I could say that 3,000 yes, members of my community were killed in 84. Mr. Puri, Mr. Puri, let's not go back into history. It's a question to do it today. I know the history is relevant, but the point is to do it today. You don't want to answer it, that's your prerogative. No, no, Sashi Tharoor, in a rally that he held today, Mr. Modi pointed out that when Times Now asked Rahul Gandhi to apologize for 1984, Rahul Gandhi too was unwilling to do so. And many people feel that both gentlemen, Rahul Gandhi and Narendra Modi, can't bring themselves to apologize when otherwise it ought to be the natural instinct of a politician. No, I'm afraid we've lost that line to... Mr. Surjavala, did you hear that question? Would you want to answer it? Why is it that Rahul Gandhi can't apologize for 84, which is exactly what we are saying Mr. Modi can't do for 2002? There's a crucial difference. Can I, uh, can I Mr. Thapa, begin by saying that neither has uh, Mr. Modi changed his style, nor his disdain and disrespect mm. for principal but, human values. But my values. question was about and Rahul Gandhi. It better than when you. But, but my I question will, was I about Rahul Gandhi. Let's, 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 me. let's. Come Permit to the me point. a line more, Mr. Thapar. Permit me a line more. And who knows it better than you? When you asked him that question, he threw his mic off and ran away. And now, Mr. Wahid Nakwi has lost his job. Just a moment. So in that that, that, but Mr. Surjavala, as far as Mr. Mr. Surjavala goes, come back to my question. Why is Rahul Gandhi unwilling to apologize? It was quite clear on times now that he wouldn't apologize for 84. And the point Mr. Modi is making is to compare himself to Rahul Gandhi. Both of them have a problem apologizing. Short point is Mrs. Sonia Gandhi, Prime Minister of this country, both have expressed deep regrets for the unfortunate incidents. So there's no need for Rahul Gandhi to do the same? Condemnable incidents of 1984. Mr. Rahul Gandhi has repeatedly said that he shares their anguish, he shares their pain. Which is not the same, which is not the same the, as apologizing. You're quoting him Prime so Minister accurately, you're the giving Congress the game away. What Mr. Gandhi said was that he shares their sentiments. But he hasn't said that he apologizes. And that's the point. And in times now, he actually refused to apologize. And that's the second point. Where then is he any different to Narendra Modi, who today equally refused to apologize? May I point out, Mr. Thapar, he also said when he was answering the question to the, to the gentleman journalist, that he was perhaps in college or school. Oh, and he said that both ah, the Prime Minister and Congress. A different history and a different context. Mr. Puri was bringing up one, you're bringing up another, all right? Both of you, both of you are very similar. There's a fundamental difference here. There's a fundamental difference. Which is quickly. Which is that Mr. Modi has been cleared 
of these kind of uh, allegations. Uh, well, I'll come to that in a moment, yeah, sir. Yeah. That's so, another so question he, whether he has been cleared or not. Accept, just expect a moment. Let's him to let's apologize. Let's, let's, then he's being asked to no, take blame for something moment, he has been moment, cleared on. Just a moment. Just a moment. You apologize for things going wrong under your watch when you are responsible for them. You apologize for something that shouldn't have happened. He has expressed you remorse. Oh. He has expressed remorse on earlier occasions. But to by, take, compare, to by comparing it to a puppy being run over by a car. Let me let me bring in Rudrakshu Mukherjee, who's joined us, Mr. Mukherjee, in a separate interview to A and I this evening. Mr. Modi said with great pride that between 2002 and 2007 he had answered all the questions that had been put to him by senior journalists. He said he was never silent, he'd never ducked them. Do you accept that? Or is he being less than honest and less than full with the truth? If I remember rightly, didn't he walk out of one of your shows, Karan, because you asked him some uncomfortable questions? Or is my memory... Uh, your memory is spot on, Mr. Here. Mukherjee, and I love your ironic, paradoxical way of putting it. Yes, he did. So, he walked out of an interview in two and a half or three minutes. Yeah, so if he... so. There, we already know now that there are a series of questions which Karan Thapa wanted to ask him that he refused to answer. And he refused to answer them presumably because he thought it would be embarrassing for him and he, or he didn't have answers to those questions. Okay. So he refuses to face anything that he thinks or assumes is going to be hostile. So does he believe in democracy at all? That's a I valid take, question, but let's not expand it to that, that extent. That. I've got Shashi Thurur with me. That line to Bombay has come back. Let me very quickly, Mr. Thurur, put this to you. What we're doing is to compare Narendra Modi's reluctance or refusal in an interview to TV9 earlier today to apologize with Rahul Gandhi's reluctance or refusal in his Times Now interview to apologize for 84. And the point I'm making is that there's an uncanny similarity. Both of these gentlemen find that the word sorry gets stuck in their throat. Not, not, not at all, I'm sorry. First of all, Narendra Modi is failing to apologize for something that happened on his watch as Chief Minister of Gujarat. Rahul Gandhi pointed out modestly that he was 12 years old when this happened. You want him to apologize for something that he had absolutely no role whatsoever in? He'll apologize. You want him to apologize for the 62 war? He'll apologize. Uh, he you didn't want him actually. to apologize for the 47 Forgive me, partition forgive me. Riots? He didn't apologize. apologize. Let's be serious and talk about 2014. No, but the point is you're asking the wrong person. He had absolutely no adult responsibility or executive responsibility for what happened in 84. And you're asking him to apologize for something that he neither did nor had any he active knowledge of who he committed what. Uh, he is the BJP's prime ministerial candidate equally. Mr. Rahul Gandhi is the Congress's prime ministerial candidate. In 3,000 members of my community were killed in cold blood. And you set up seven commissions. Uh, to something else, then you played political football with them. So it is entirely legitimate for Mr. Modi to ask this question. All right. Those those who have uh, played political football with the 84 situation and all those commissions which were established okay. let's, have absolutely let's, no let's, right, let's, especially since Mr. Modi has been cleared me, of all judicial just about, scrutiny just about, over no, 12 just, years. Just a moment. I don't want this to become a polemical match entirely over who apologized, who didn't, who should have apologized, who shouldn't have. I want to broaden the discussion a little and I want to put this to you, Amit Barwa. Speaking to Muslim clerics in Delhi in February, Rajnath Singh, the president of the BJP said, कहीं यदि हम लोगों के पाठ पर कोई भी गलती और चूक हुई होगी तो मैं आपको यकीन दिलाता हूं हम शीश झुकाकर अपना सिर झुकाकर हम क्षमा मांग लेंगे इज इट सफिशिएंट फॉर दिस एपिसोड टू बी अपॉलोजाइज फॉर बाय राजनाथ सिंह और इज इट एसेंशियल दैट मिस्टर मोदी शुड बी सीन टू डू द अपॉलोजाइजिंग एज़ वेल well, you know, obviously uh, emotions are quite, uh, you know, running high and uh, political issues are getting are really surcharged right now. But I think that this whole debate of 84 and 2002 has gone on for quite a long time. And I don't see how you can support one and defend another. I think both were really bad and they're both a blot on the Indian Republic. Can, 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 I, can, can, can I interrupt? Can I interrupt? To the In addition to both being a blot on the Indian Republic, would you say the reluctance of both Rahul Gandhi Gandhi and Narendra Modi to apologize for the respective events is equally damning and equally disheartening. 
Well, I would say, yeah, I would say that. But I think that the, the key thing is that it's not enough to apologize. I mean, you know, if people are killed, thousands of people were killed. If you look at it true, in true, Delhi true. and in but, Gujarat, but an apology I mean, responsibility needs to be fixed. You're and exactly, we are exactly, right. exactly, exactly. Which has never, exactly. Right. Which but, but has an never, apology is a starting point. Let's let's move on beyond the apology to the point you are making. Just, uh, there is something wants, beyond an apology, which is a criminal justice system. I want to come to the point you were making, where you claimed a moment ago that Mr. Modi has been given a clean chit. There's no doubt that repeatedly Mr. Modi makes this point, he's been given a clean chit. But the truth is that A, it's only from a magistrate's court in Ahmedabad. Two, it's already under appeal at the High Court. And three, don't forget what the Supreme Court in a written judgment in the Zahira Sheikh judgment of 12th April 2004 said. It compared him and his government to modern day Nero's who deliberately looked the other way as innocent children and helpless women burnt whilst the court added perhaps deliberating how to protect the perpetrators of the crime. So when you bear all of that in mind, has he really got a clean shit? No, let me, let me, uh, please give me an opportunity to respond to this. You have to define what judicial closure means and at what point of time. At this point of time, he has been cleared of all judicial scrutiny, incessant over a 12 year period. And till such time, till such time that the challenge uh, comes back and he has to again respond. We, we should consider this a judicial closure. Number one. Well, just a let me, let me complete this. Point. Let Let's me. get Congress to come in and I'll yeah. come back to you. There's a very good point made there, Shashi Tharoor, by Hardeep Puri. That judicial closure as of this moment is determined by the fact that a verdict of the magistrate court has cleared him. There's no doubt that that verdict is under appeal. But until that appeal overturns the initial verdict, the verdict is a valid judicial pronouncement and it stands. And therefore, when Mr. Modi says he's got a clean shit, as of today, that is the case. Can you deny it? No, look, he has a clean shit at this stage of the process. But don't forget that the words of the Supreme Court that you read out in that's 2004 context, also still context. stand, have not been reversed or changed, and that there is a process that's going on. Look, Karan, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to do a Modi to you and leave this interview right now because I have another one to go to. But if I could just make the larger point, there is a huge difference of responsibility between a person who was chief minister at the time that this tragedy occurred and somebody who was 12 years old at a time when an equally terrible crime occurred. I am never somebody who's going to defend in any way the role of anybody culpable in 1984. But to make Rahul Gandhi's okay. uh, admitting that he was only 12 years old at the time the equivalent of Narendra Modi saying he will not apologize is to me it seems a, a, an All act right. of complete a moral failing. I take your you point. have no equivalency let, let, here. Let, 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 there let. is a difference. And I think that Rahul Gandhi has in any case added that he associates himself with the views of those who were adults Although, at that time, know, his prime minister and his party is, president, the problem who happens is to be his mother. The problem is that wonderful euphemism he views associates himself with the views of the prime minister is very different to saying I apologize. It's even he different to saying I agrees. express regret. He but feels, he feels. I? He feels the same regret. How can you apologize for something you haven't done? He regrets this happened. You he could always the say I apologize for the fact that this said, happened under a Congress policy. government. You could always say I apologize for the fact that many people believe that in fact my father was responsible in the sense that he didn't do enough. He was late in calling out the army. Those are things a son can say with ease. Those are things a vice president can say yeah. with ease. Should he want to? But he didn't. But I understand you have to go. I'm grateful that you joined us. Let me carry this on and Thank put you. a quick point to Rudrangshu Mukherjee before I come to Mr. Surjewala. What about other things, Mr. Mukherjee, such as the fact that in 2004, the Supreme Court reopened some 2,500 out of a total of over 4,500 cases. It changed many of the prosecutors appointed by the Gujarat government of Mr. Modi. And in some critical cases, it transferred them altogether outside Gujarat. In the face of all of that, can the magistrate's limited clean chit really be considered a clean chit when you know that there's so much else that is discordant, if not contradictory? Mr. Mukherjee? Oh, we clear. We don't have a line, I'm afraid we've got a mic problem over there. Let me put that to you because it concerns you just as much. You've heard the facts. In that wider context, what sort of clean shit has he got? He's got an absolute clean shit to the extent that that was the judicial scrutiny at that point of time. Now, 
there have been no, no, allegations. No, 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 forgive me, forgive me. Just a moment. You may have not heard the full facts. I heard the full. Some cases were transferred out. Not some. Yeah. Not some. Two thousand five hundred out of four thousand five hundred reopened. 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 Prosecutors changed. Fair enough. Critical cases transferred out. That's an indictment of the judicial system. No, hold under on, Mr. hold Modi. on, hold on. In two thousand and five, on May eleven, to be uh, specific. The Minister of State for Home, answering a written question in Parliament, said 790 Muslims and 254 Hindus were killed in the riots. So clearly, this was a communal carnage where both Muslims no, no, and Hindus were killed. So why are you tilting this to the other side? I'm not tilting but, it. I'm simply asking you a question. Yes. If so many cases are transferred out, so many are reopened, having been closed. If Clear. prosecutors are changed, can you claim that your government and you have got a clean shit? Well, the Supreme Court. Well, is I, I, to step I think in. the determination will be made by the people in the elections. But equally, if there is a judicial challenge, that will be responded to. Mr. And Sujara, Mr. Modi has always said, "If I am guilty, hang me." But what you are subjecting him to is just Modi bashing and no, defamation. I am not subjecting him. Well, to that is what this uh, uh, industry no, no, is all about. No, no, I am not sure if it's the industry is about it. It would not happen if Mr. Modi simply said, "I am." Oh, you will this go? Criminal sorry. justice system is not going to stop Mr. functioning Mr. Sujara, just because somebody says Mr. sorry. Mr. Sujara, let me put a different view to you, which is actually a view echoed earlier by Mr. Puri here in studio. Will you accept that on this clean shit issue, the fairest thing to say is that as of now, there is no adverse verdict against Mr. Modi personally. And that's so important, I want to repeat it. No adverse verdict against Mr. Modi personally as of now. Although the last word hasn't been said because the magistrate court's verdict is already under appeal at the High Court. Will you accept that's the fairest Mr. way of Tarpa, putting it? We must not lose sight of... Mr. We must not lose sight of three facts. Firstly, Mr. Modi's 2IC, Maya Ben Kornani, his colleague in the cabinet, is convicted and is in jail for the same riots. Two dozen officers of police and administration are either, have either been convicted and are in jail or are on different stages of trial. Number three, first time in the history of this country, Supreme Court of India not believing the prosecution agency of the state which was found to be prejudiced and hand in gloves with the mm. accused had but, to but, transfer but, but, all you know, the Mr. Sujewala, outside Mr. the state. Mr. it's quite that possible that ministers out. in his government could and be found criminally at fault and, and jailed without Mr. Modi being personally absolutely, responsible. Absolutely. You're jumping from one is, is to the, the other. Is the Prime Minister of India responsible for the acts of omission or commission absolutely. for his cabinet colleagues? I, I, I mean, the, the, the kind of scams, scams, corruption scams, scams you're, is the Prime held, Minister responsible for this? Mr. Modi guilty at the time of riots had to come forward and remind him of Raj Dharma. Atal Bihari Vajpayee, oh, he was his on. prime and, minister. And, and he was complying with it. it. That is but but gentlemen, 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 let, 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 let's Mr. try and make this a and civilized discussion. Mr. Sujawala, I'm interrupting you because the question I asked you was an important one and you've deflected it. The question was this, on this issue of a clean shit, will you accept that the fairest thing to say is that as of today, there is no adverse verdict against Mr. Modi, although the final word has still to be spoken. That's fair. Will you accept that that is the fairest that way of leaving fair. it? Thapar. Mr. Thapa, simple thing is, who was leading the state under whose command? No, command no, 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 you're not answering. I asked a simple question. Give me a simple happening? answer. Who was responsible for not oh, let, me, let me, let me, I want to go who to Amit Barwa because the two speeches. spokesmen are deliberately confusing this. It's a polemical issue that the two parties have great political importance to. Uh, Amit Barwa, Amit Barwa, Mr. Sujawala, uh, Mr. Sujawala, I have to stop you because we, uh, this is not and shouldn't become just a polemical debate. Do you get the feeling, Amit Barwa, that the easiest and perhaps wisest thing for Mr. Modi to do would be to simply apologize? To find a form of words that doesn't humiliate him, but nonetheless How conveys. Can take just a moment, for will, you let some, will you let someone else answer a question? Your name isn't Amit Baru, as far as I know. Amit Barua, do well, you think the uh, wisest thing I would be to yeah. apologize or find a form of words that expresses the required regret, rather than face this as a problem every time an interview happens? Because once again, suddenly today, it's become a flashpoint. It's all over the television screens. It's going to be all over the newspapers tomorrow. So is Mr. Modi handling this badly? 
Well, you know, he's had many opportunities to express regret or apologize for what has happened. But the words that really, the way he, the puppy remark that came out, I think that it showed his reluctance to apologize, his reluctance to express regret. I think even if he does so, even today, I think it would be a good thing. It would be an advance of what happened. He is, after all, uh, a serious contender for the Prime Minister's chair. And citizens of this country would like whoever occupies that chair okay. to be a person who is fair-minded, who would be just towards all communities. And therefore, and he, should apologize. Is that what saying? Believe, I, I, he I, should apologize. Is that what you're saying? He should apologize. I think he should apologize. But Rudanshu at Mukherjee. the same time, I... Let, let, let me stop you there because I want to I build on that point. Rudanshu Mukherjee, one of Mr. the Mr. things Thakar, that you've heard from I, Mr. I, I, Puri... I'll come to you, Mr. Surjewala. Hold, hold your peace a moment. Hold your peace. I know politicians want to be heard all the time, but just give someone else a chance for a second. Mr. Mukherjee, one no, of the no, arguments... I, mean, I have to go and I told you that I will leave at 9.15. I fully understand. I'm very grateful you stayed on to help us over that little problem we had with Shashi Tharoor. Many, many thanks and my gratitude to you. Rudanshu Mukherjee, I want to put to you a point made by Hardi Puri. That people are asking Mr. Modi to apologize for something he claims he's never done. Therefore, how can he apologize? Because apology would Precisely. be like an admission of guilt. Exactly. Because he's not guilty, he can't apologize. Do you accept that logic or do you take the other viewpoint? That there is nothing to stop him from apologizing for something that went horribly wrong when he was in charge of the state. And that's an apology that doesn't take on board personal guilt, but just a moral responsibility. Exactly. I mean, he, I mean, yeah, he asked the chief minister of Gujarat when the pogrom happened, he has to take moral responsibility and just say, I'm sorry, I did not fulfill my duties as chief minister and stop the violence that was, that was occurring right, right under my nose. All right. You were I saying... Mean, that's the moral thing to do. Yeah. Why is that not the acceptable I mean, thing to do it, for it Mr. Modi? Because, because look at the be empirical basis, look at the facts. The man went out of his way. The police shot people, including Hindus, which is in sharp contrast to what happened in 1984. Now, there is a difference between culpability, moral, taking moral responsibility. The man has been charged. He, he has said, he has said, moral I will... responsibility. No, hold on. He please, hasn't. Please, he's please never look accepted at the law. that please. morally he's responsible for what went wrong when he was chief minister. He, All he has to do he is said, to say, I was in charge. Something that happened shouldn't which have means, happened. Which I'm means, responsible. I apologize. Which means he has to assume responsibility but he for was institutional failure. But there was not. I'm making a different point. Please, right. please hear me out. I am saying that he says that the criminal justice system has been in operation. These the cases have been foiled. criminal justice system and, has and got nothing to do says, with moral says, sorry, responsibility. And they say, here, here it is. He, it's been Puri, established. Mr. Puri, criminal justice systems have nothing to do with moral responsibility. Conscience and ethics, which is a higher court, has to do with moral responsibility. In That's this, where Mr. In Modi's this presently, short. presently charged atmosphere, when uh, invectives are being heard all right. on all sides, my advice to you is, he has been consistent. All Please right. let the people decide. And then once the we get judicial closure, will. then you can have a higher me, let method. Me, let uh, me ethical. assure you, the yeah. people will decide. But oh, we've run no right out of time. This is clearly another one of those very contentious, polemical issues. Just like the first one, appealing for votes from the Muslim community. So too, when it comes to Mr. Modi or Rahul Gandhi, and whether they've apologized and whether they should, it becomes a hot and heated debate. And you've seen the fireworks fly in studio today. I'm afraid we've run right out of time. We're going to be back, hopefully, with a more analytical and a more peaceful discussion tomorrow. Goodbye, good night.